do and you know how the service runs and operates and then I'll be happy to answer questions if I can at the end. Um, so without any further ado, let's get moving. <clears throat> so Calibre Audio is the only national charity in the UK that provides a completely free for life audio book service for everyone who has a condition that makes reading print difficult. Um, so that's the overall statement. Um, so we bring stories and learning to the lives of adults and children with a range of different print disabilities, um, and that includes blindness and visual impairment, physical disabilities, um, which limit the ability to hold or manipulate printed information. So that that includes a lot of different conditions, but like arthritis, long COVID we've put in recently as well, because we know that the um, the fatigue that goes with that is, is, is quite crippling for some people. Um, and then stroke, sort of brain injury and other neurological conditions as well. Um, and then also perceptual or other di disabilities which limit the ability to follow a line of print or which affect concentration. So that includes a lot of the dyslexia, ADHD, um, those types of um, autism, um, Asperger's, all, all those sorts of um, conditions as well. <clears throat> so how do we help? So we offer, as, as I said, a free for life audiobook service. So anyone can sign up, you know, if you, if you qualify under those, um, under our criteria, you can sign up and it's a membership for life. We have over 14 and a half thousand unabridged audiobooks um, covering sort of fiction and non-fiction. There's titles for adults and children, um, there's classics and new bestsellers. <clears throat> so there's a very wide range. Um, we offer a choice of formats for listening, um, ranging from USB memory sticks to various streaming and download options, which I'll go through with you shortly. Um, we have a dedicated membership services team here who are very knowledgeable about books and reading um, and are all very happy to talk talk to you. Um, they sit in a little office here and they're very busy and they're very, very helpful. Um, so we we see them as a as a huge asset for, for our service. We also offer um, book clubs, which, you know, for those people who are looking for some sort of community connection and would like to talk about, you know, what they're listening to or reading. Um, with other people. There are all sorts of book, different book clubs that they can get involved with. Um, if you're a school, um, we offer accounts for schools so that you can sort of set up and the teachers who, who might be um, promoting this within the school can have a look around and see what's there. Um, we have partnerships with a lot of the publishers. So a lot of the, so like Penguin Random House will give us their audiobooks for free. So where, where their, um, their, their books are actually produced in an audio format, um, we have an agreement with them that they give them to us for nothing, which is <clears throat> very helpful for us because it means we don't have to spend our hard earned cash on buying all of these titles. Um, and we are absolutely committed here to widening access through all sorts of new technical technological developments. So the, the big thing that we've got coming soon is um, smart speakers. <clears throat> At the moment, we have 17 and a half thousand members, um, aged from five to 105. Um, we also support libraries, schools and community groups nationwide, um, providing audiobooks and facilitating book groups um, to promote inclusion. And we also offer services to overseas members, um, but we do have a small charge for them. So why audiobooks? Um, so what's the importance of them? Um, well, basically, they remove the barrier of the written word and the physical book for those who just can't access those. And we know, we know, because we hear what, what our members are telling us, but um, a research review by the Na National Literacy Trust has also found that audiobooks, and this is actually not for people with any sort of pr print disability, but for children generally, um, find that audiobooks improve their reading skills and enjoyment of reading, improve their reading comprehension, support their emotional intelligence, intelligence and well-being, mental well-being, 
and generally widen access to books. So there's lots, lots of good stuff going on, you know, lots of brilliant benefits for people from audiobooks, <clears throat> particularly children. <laughs> um, so a little bit about our audiobooks. As I said, we have got a very wide choice. We've got an agreement with lots of publishers um, who pass on their commercially recorded books. And if we haven't got an agreement with them, we can usually buy those titles in if, if, if they're ones that we really think are going to um, be beneficial for our collection. We also um, record, we have caliber recorded books. So we have a, we have a team of volunteer narrators who record their own books. So it's around 250 books a year that we put into the collection every every year. Um, and these will be the books that aren't available otherwise on audio. Um, so there's definite, definitely books in our collection that you won't get anywhere else. <laughs> as, and as I said, sometimes we have to purchase some books, um, which we'll do if they are really important ones that we think should be in our collection. We have over 70 different categories at the moment from biographies to classics, thrillers, science, history, fantasy stories and many more. And for children, there are categories for each key stage, along with specific A-level and GCSE texts and an early years section. Um, our voices, so the narrators, <clears throat> A lot of celebrities are doing narrating of professional audio books now. So we have everyone from Prince Harry and Stephen Fry, who's well known for the Harry Potter books, isn't he? <laughs> um, through to sort of Gary Barlow, who's just literally that's just out now, um, has narrated his own book um, called A Different Stage. So we have a lot, a lot of um, celebrities now doing that. There are also professional narrators um, who do it for a living and are real voice professionals. And then we have our caliber volunteers who, who I mentioned just before. And most of the, those are voice professionals as well. A lot of them were, are former actors or actresses or current actors and act actresses um, and can speak a lot better than I can. Um, <laughs> so how how do we listen to audiobooks? So there's three main ways that you can listen. Um, you can stream from Play Calibre, which is our own um, streaming platform. You can download the books via apps um, like Libby and Dolphin Easy Reader, which I'll, I'll come on and talk about the, all of these a little bit more in a minute. Um, or you can have a USB stick delivered by post. Um, we have so, you know, we believe this gives options for people to use their usual usual accessibility tools like screen readers um, or to be non digital if, if they if they choose to. So hopefully it will. It's flexible enough for you to be able to access it in the way that you need to. Um, and coming soon, as I mentioned earlier, smart speakers, we're working hopefully on an Alexa skill, which we, we hope that we can launch before too long. Um, so how to listen. <clears throat> so this is the streaming. As I, as I mentioned, we have our own streaming platform called Play Calibre. Um, so that's available on PCs, laptops or, or any other mobile devices that, that, that are internet enabled. Um, and you simply sign in with your membership number and start searching for books in categories or you can search on book numbers or authors or, or narrators. Um, you're able to listen to a short sample of the book before you choose it, um, which is quite good because sometimes, I don't know, you might feel that you don't want to listen to that person's voice today. You're not in the mood for it. So you can choose another one if, if that's the case. You can borrow up to about four books at a time and you can save on a list on, on there. You can sort of save ones for, for, you know, to come back to, to read at another time. Um, on Libby. Libby is the library app. It's used by many, many public libraries. Um, and you literally, again, you sign in, you search for Calibre Audio in the library section, sign in with your membership and PIN number, and you can browse the library from a range of different categories. You can borrow up to four books on that and hold and reserve a further five books. <clears throat> and that's in addition to to any that you might have on on streaming because you can listen in all of these different ways if you choose. Um, 
loans are automatically downloaded for offline use if if that's what you wish to do and they're automatically returned so you don't have to remember to do that yourself um dolphin easy reader again this is this is an app that's um, quite accessible um you may be aware of it um, and again it's it's fairly simple to operate on there download the app register sign in find Calibre Audio and the library list and then have a look at the books on offer. Um, you can bookmark an audio book as you go through it so you can come back and find where you are in it. Um, and you can change all the font sizes and colours to whatever is going to suit you. Um, and then we also have our USB service, um, which as I said, you know, there are some people who just don't don't interact with with digital stuff um, at all um, and they might have a dedicated USB player that they just plug the stick into or they might listen via a PC or a laptop if they do have those. Um, there is an online facility on Play, Play Calibre to manage your postal list so you can do that or you can actually just tell us in advance that you, your preferred categories and our computer automatically sets, selects and sends out um, books in that category for you. Um, and the USBs are sent in a, one of these blue pouches that you can see on the screen there um, via Royal Mail. So that's a quick, a quick run through of the different ways that you can listen. Um, the impact for children and young people is quite considerable. We're always being told this. Um, at the moment, we've got 1,854 Young Calibre members and we added 286 new children's books, just, just children's books last year. Um, and we know that children and schools are a big focus for our future. This is where we want to sort of try and develop. So we're very keen to work with people in this area. Um, the key impacts for children are it builds confidence, obviously it improves literacy, it helps reduce some social isolation by helping them, um, you know, they can talk about books to their friends and, and that sort of thing they might not have been able to do otherwise. Um, it can give a sense of purpose and belonging and it has a very positive effect on mental health. So these are a couple of quotes from some of our um, children and young people. Um, so the first one says, you know, my daughter now has access to a wonderful world of books. She can talk with her peers about common interest books. It gives her confidence and is helping to develop her love for literature. This service has made a huge difference. And then this other one um, from a parent says, discovering Calibre Audio has been an absolute game changer for us. The gift of a book is so much more than the page it's written on. It supports education, self-esteem, social interaction and boosts the child's confidence. You can see that in Toby every day as he is as he explores and grows despite the huge hurdles he faces. We all feel more optimistic about the future now. So I think those are those are great comments about, you know, the difference that just listening to audiobooks can make. I have included something on, on adults here. I know that <clears throat> primarily we're talking about children <laughs> today but I think the important thing to remember is this is a membership for life so you know we do have over 15 and a half thousand adult members and we we put um, 1,220 new adult books into the library last year says this year last year um, <clears throat> and Adults, again, you know, have a huge benefit from listening to audiobooks and a lot of these translate to children as well. 70% of them were saying that they felt less stressed and anxious. 69% said they felt cheered up if they were feeling down or depressed. 67% said they provided a sense of companionship and 55% said they made them feel more connected to the world. Um, so again, all, all good um, evidence of the impact of audiobooks. Um, <clears throat> this gentleman um, had a stroke which left him very severely disabled and he said um, that Calibre was a lifeline for him, um, gave him back the ability to sort of listen and read to read books that he wasn't able to because he'd lost the use of one hand. Um, 
and that gave him some of his life back. So again, a really, a really good um, endorsement. And again, another one talking about game changing, um, being able to access books free of charge, reduces loneliness, improves my mood, feeds my mind, takes me to far flung places without even having to leave my own home and helps me get to sleep. I'm on a restricted income and could never afford to subscribe to one of the fee paying audiobook providers. Thank you so much. Um, and then another one about this, the sort of social aspect of it, being able to continue reading gives me the ability to talk to my friends and family about books they may be interested in reading and a feeling of normality again, even if only for a short while. Um, so, you know, really, really good firm endorsements of it. Um, so our plans for the future, um, we want to grow our membership to meet the increasing need. Um, we know it's there. We need to meet it. Uh, we want to focus and develop our, our support for schools and children, particularly, which I mentioned earlier. Um, we are absolutely committed to embracing technology and improving accessibility as far as we can, which is why we're looking at the smart speakers. Um, we want to diversify our income to ensure that as a charity we are sustainable. Um, we are committed to collaborating with all sorts of partnerships. You know, I've mentioned the publishers, but um, you know, we work with some of the book festivals and things like that um, just to get the word out there as much as we possibly can. Um, and one of our um, corporate aims, I suppose, is to improve the diversity of our trustees and staff and also our membership and our books. Um, we don't receive any money from the government. We have to fundraise for 100 percent of our one and a half million pounds um, running costs every year. Um, I'm just saying this because it's it's interesting for you to know where the money comes from. So a lot of it is from legacies from members who've used the service, um, donations and fundraising appeals, and also from grants, trusts and foundations. So <clears throat> what's next if you're a school or an organisation? Do sign up for an account and have a look around the collection and explore how it will work for you. Um, if you're a parent or a young person, sign up as individuals because this is a lifetime membership, so it goes beyond you just being at one particular school. And then contact us if you have any questions. Um, I've just put up here my my details. So that's the website address for you to have a look. There's a special school sign up form at caliberaudio.org.uk forward slash schools, or you can email us, or phone us, or drop us a note on social media. And that's my name and my email address if anyone wants to get in touch with me. Um, it was a little bit shorter than 30 minutes, but <laughs> I'm very happy to take questions if anyone's got any. Um, yeah, um, thanks very much for that. I mean, it's such an amazing service. And um, there's um, one or two questions I think that's been put in the chat. So I don't know if the people that have put them want to turn their mics on and actually ask because we've got quite a small group here. Oh. <laughs> Gone quiet. Um, I wanted to ask, um, I haven't typed a question in yet. Um, I, first of all, yeah, really amazing uh, service. It's so good. Um, I was just wondering, I don't know if you mentioned it or if maybe it's obvious and I, did, I didn't catch it, but how, how does someone actually gain access to the service? Do you have to show some kind of like you don't you don't need you know. um proof of a, of a disability we we do it all on um <clears throat> on trust you know if you if you turn around to us and say that you have dyslexia or you're visually impaired then that's enough for us there's no sure so theoretically like i could make an i'm not that i'm going to obviously but you know <laughs> theoretically i could make an account like i don't have to show any kind of evidence no. No, okay. I mean we okay. don't, we don't, we don't sort of publicise that too widely. But I mean, 
one of the main reasons that we've done that is because certainly for children, we know how difficult it is to get a formal diagnosis of, you know, certainly things like dyslexia and yeah. and that sort of thing. And we don't want to put any any more barriers in people's way. So yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, of course. We've done that. Sure, sure. Yeah, no, I just wanted to understand the process a bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Thank you. No worries. Well, you've you've just asked answered Ali's. Um, question as well by um, the answer because she was asking about criteria for children with VI. So, yeah, um, yeah, I think that's resolved that one. Um, was there any other questions? Oh, would you like to ask your question? Sorry, I'm just trying to get my mic working. Um, <laughs> I was just wondering, because um, I'm from a school in a SEND department, um, how would students get access to this? Would it be like one login detail or do they have their, would they have their own login? Well, we do, we do try to encourage um, schools to, to, well, to encourage the students to, to sign up individually so they have their own account. Mainly because it's, you know, it's not just a school activity, it's something yes. that they can do at home as well. Um, so it's better if they do do that, but you can sign them up through a school account if 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 you want to or you need to if you know there isn't the cooperation at home maybe to um, yes. to sign them up individually, <laughs> then you can do it through the school. But I think okay. the better the better way is is to try and get them to have their own own account that stays with them. Brilliant, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Question. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask, is it just uh, fiction or you might have said this already, is it non-fiction as well? No, there isn't. There are quite a lot of non-fiction non titles in there. Um, so, you know, it's 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 great to sort of expand knowledge generally um, in addition to, to the books. I mean, we do find that I think a lot of children do like the books, but um, you know the novels but uh no the non-fiction is quite important hmm. and do you have sort of gcse course books and things like that on on your list um in terms of textbooks is, yeah. is that what you're asking um, yeah i don't think we've got too many of those they're quite difficult to narrate <laughs> yeah um but it is something that we're looking at because we realize it's there so it's, so we definitely have sort of like set texts um so if you know for gcse and a level and that sort of thing we have those books um but i don't think we have too many um textbooks okay. at, at this point in time <laughs> no that's great thank you anyone else Brilliant. Uh, well, I might stop the recording then.